We are live. Welcome, everybody. How you doing? I'm excited for today's podcast. Let's start off like we do every week, saying hello to everybody in chat. Uh, I see Big Wrench Catfishing out there. What's going on, Big Wrench? How you doing? I see Brandon's Outdoor Adventures. Brian B. Catfishing crew member in the house. What's up, Brian B.? How you doing? Thanks for your support. I see Lynn over at Catfish Fever and Outdoors. What's up, Lynn? Uh, I see Chris Everett, Chrissy Brown, crew member. How you doing, Chrissy? There's Chucky Morgan. There's Miss Cindy Stokes. How you doing, Cindy? David Smith in the house. Downtown Ernie Brown. What's up, my friend? Fat man in a little boat. That I resemble that on, on some nights. Actually, I did last Saturday. Uh, Fishing by Faith Outdoors with Jeff Barker. How you doing, Jeff? Gray Wolf Outdoors. There's Jay Fox Hunter, crew member. What's up, Jay Fox? How you doing, bud? Lance McCougai in the house. I see Mike Irvin. Mike Irvin's birthday was last Saturday. So everybody wish him a belated happy birthday. Parker Pursuits. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good fish on Saturday night. Uh, there's Jody from Pontoon Jody Catfishing. There's Tanya Hollis, cat, uh, Queen Catfishing. Josh, the weekend angler. What's up, Josh? Daryl from the Trophy Seekers. Had a great time talking to Daryl uh, last week, our last podcast on the show, uh, or last time I had the podcast up. Uh, there's Frank over at uh, Twisted Fishing TV. Uh, he is also a crew member. Thank you for your support. Uncle Jeep in the house. Uncle Jeep. Your sticker went out today, so uh, if you, yeah, if you guys are waiting on stickers or uh, uh, the prize from Panfish Nation that I gave away last week, that all went out today. Thank you for being very patient. I appreciate you guys coming in here still, uh, even after it's taken a while uh, to get you that stuff out. I see Van over at V3 Custom KY. What's up, Van? Crew member, how you doing? There's Want to Be Outdoors, Matt. What's going on? Uh, there's crew member Avid over at Avid Fisherman. How you doing? Uh, let's see who I missed here. I know I missed a bunch. I want to say hello to Betty. She's either watching now or she'll watch it after the fact. Big shout out to Brandon. What's up, my friend? How you doing, Brandon? Uh, I want to say hello to D. How you doing, D? I want to say hello to Katie and Dockery as well. I see Fishing Chick came in here. What's up? Uh, Dale Hayslip, in case I missed you. There's crew member Crappie Day Fish on. How you doing? Uh, fishing with Squirrel. What's up, my friend? It's all mine. How you doing, Michelle? Going through this list again. Look, lady in the house, Oak Tree Outdoors. Man, they're all coming in better late than ever, right? Uh, we got Old Timer Bass Chaser. What's up? What's up? How you doing? I think that's a new one. Uh, Troy over at Real Virtual Outdoors. I want to make sure I don't miss Troy. He's always sharing out the link. If you guys haven't yet, I'd appreciate it. There's Kelly over at the Bullock Experience. Uh, and I think I might have got everybody. If oh, there's Miss Annette Morgan. How you doing, Annette? What's going on? If I missed anybody, please forgive me. Um, I apologize. It gets a little uh, hectic up here. <laughs> so I'm getting old and blind, Tara. I mean, it, it's a uh, long story. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the Catfish and Crappie Podcast. My name is Mark. I want to start off the show today thank, with a big thank you to Port Barrington Marina for helping make this show possible uh, with offering me a sponsorship uh, to help the program. Uh, big shout out to them. Their links are in the description. You're forever on the great Fox Lake or Fox River here in Illinois. Uh, make sure you look them up. Full service marina. Uh, great, great brand new boat ramp, new docks, the whole deal. It's a great, great thing. So mega shout out to to jimmy forbes thank you for taking good care of me tonight's guest tara how do you say your last name again tara Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay or Lindsay? Lindsay. Lindsay. <laughs> tara is from the great state of minnesota correct yes sir so how are you doing today i'm doing great it's not fishing tonight which is weird i've been putting in lots of hours this past week well i've been trying to get you on ever since you're on catfish weekly that was a great appearance with you and luke i have to say that was my first podcast ever it was first but we'll talk ever. more about we'll talk more about the podcast here in a little bit we don't want to jump ahead i mean i'm i'm a mess as it is so <laughs> you get way ahead of me you're, it's all going to be downhill from this and all right i'll follow your lead all right <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea either, but we're going to go with it. We're definitely going to go with it. Um, the great state of Minnesota. Uh, so um, what can I say about Minnesota? I grew up um, vacationing in Minnesota quite a bit, mostly like uh, – um, was it Big Winnie? Winnie Big Oshish, am I saying that oh, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I know how to say it right, but it sounds right. 
<laughs> I uh, did some walleye and some pike fishing and some musky fishing up there. Um, caught like probably, I think my first uh, yellow perch up at that big, it's a big lake. It's like a mm-hmm. hundred square mile, like bathtub. It's a big, huge open lake weather, own weather system pretty much. Um, I had the privilege of talking to um, Brian Brosdale from up there, uh, bro. Uh, he's invited me up there to come ice fishing with him. I don't know if we're going to get that serious about it. Maybe we'll head out there one of these days, but I'm getting too old to ice fish. Aww. Yeah, I, I am. Oh, not so much ice fish. It's the hauling the 200 pounds of gear out on foot that really kind of stinks. So. Right. It's tough, but it makes it worth it. Yeah, well, sometimes to do it sometimes. for just hand fishing, which is what it happens here. Few and far between. Well, you know, crappie, they pretty much on, on the ice, they str- they're, they're pretty much eat at night. Am I mistaken? I've got them during the day, too, but yeah, but you don't get a limit during the day. Mm. When's that ever happened? True, true. Okay. That's tough. <laughs> If I, if I catch two crappie, I don't want to bring them home and even clean them. And when you lay them out on the ice, you pretty much got to do that. So Right, right. But let's not talk about ice fishing because it was 96 degrees, 90, almost 90 degrees here today. Yeah, it was real hot up here too. Yeah, what kind of weather are you guys getting up there? Oh, gee, I think it was like 85 or 90 today and muggy. And we melt at those temperatures of us northerners, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, Holy pretty much. smokes. <laughs> Pretty cool. I yep. had to go. I had to run out and do a little bait fishing today. I depleted my uh, uh, my bait tank going out Saturday night, which was very productive, I must say. But let's, this is not about me, but it was productive, I should say. Got to brag a little bit. Yeah. How many? How many did you catch? I got I, I put I put five flats in a boat. I have got one channel cat, so it was a good night. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's exceptional for for where I fish, but I did get on a new spot. Uh, I did do most. I did catch most of it on uh, uh, Danny Stone's live stream. They do the Mississippi River Rat show every Saturday night. I think next week it's going to be on Creole's channel. Uh, there's Parker Pursuits. Parker was on there. He got like a 40-pound uh, blue cat, and Danny got a 70-pound uh, a blue during the live stream right off the bat. So a lot of, lot of good fishing on that that live stream. So it was fun to, to awesome. hang out with them, guys. Did you do any fishing this weekend? Oh, gosh, yeah. So Saturday night was a uh, first night of Catfish League that I'm in this year. First time doing it. Um, and hold so, on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to let you go any further. All right, all right, all right, all right. Catfish League. Yeah. Catfish Explain League. us, and, and I'm old, not the smartest pencil. I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box. <laughs> what is a Catfish League? So there's a, gosh, I think there's. 13 or 15 teams, something like that, teams of two. And it's every other Saturday night, and our times rotate 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And this, Why do they rotate? Uh, I think just people's work schedules. Okay. Sometimes, and I don't know. I don't know. So don't is there like two people. shifts of anglers? Is that what it is? What was that? Is there two shifts of anglers, or is it one time randomly every other week? So, I mean, is there like four anglers from six to, what did you say? Oh, time? no, it's the whole group. The whole, okay. like, it, it's just scheduled, those alternating schedules every other Saturday. Um, but, yeah, so there's like 13 or 15 teams every other Saturday. Um, you enter four fish, and then the top four fish win for the night. Um, and then we have a big fish prize, too. Um, I ended up coming in fifth out of... Oh, gee. I think we had 15 teams. So it was pretty good for my That's, first Saturday. You, per, you personally came in fifth or your team came in fifth? My team came in fifth. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't want to sound a type of way, but I did reel in the fish. <laughs> that got us there. But finished fifth, so I could do better than I imagined. My goal was to just be on the board, and I did it. So. Well, congratulations. Is what is there a cash prize at the end of this? Yep, yep, cash prize. It's oh, love it. Yeah, I love it too, man. But and what I what was my flathead? 26.14 pounds was my flathead. And then I caught this little baby chan. Um, but you know, every pound counts. Mm-hmm. And when I reeled in that flathead, I was like, Oh boy, I wonder if I got big fish of the night because you know, I wasn't getting it was quiet. It was quiet on Facebook and no one was really sharing anything. So I was like, what if I'm the one? But then turns out some guy caught a 40 and a 30 and, but fifth place, I'll take it. I'm a happy girl. 
<laughs> you know, that happens sometimes. You know, I went fishing with Eric B. And uh, um, up on Wisconsin River uh, to go after my bucket list sturgeon, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a decent 48 inch. I was happy with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a good bunch of good video and everything. At least I thought it was a good video, but that's another story. <laughs> I get I get back home and the very next day, stand over two stands fishing catches like a two hundred and twenty something pound sturgeon. I'm like, oh, like oh man, my time to shine has been stolen from me. Right, right. So, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to make that trip out west. Maybe we'll talk to Luke a little bit and get some intel. See if yeah. I can beat that two hundred twenty pounder. I'm saying I'm hopefully Luke and I are gonna head out to Idaho catch a big old white sturgeon here soon. Um, I've never caught a white sturgeon, but they get massive. And so I'm crossing my fingers that that happens here soon, too. There's something about an eight foot fish launching itself out of the water. I think even, even, even Lyle Stokes would want to see that in real time. <laughs> even Lyle Stokes would like mm -hmm. to see that. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. It's funny. I, I'll sit on TikTok and just watch people reeling those fish because they're just so exciting. Every single one has something cool to offer. And let me take a break here real quick. Avid kind of reminded me of this. Uh, links to Tara's YouTube channel. If you guys could go out there and give her a sub to her YouTube channel. If you have things like TikTok and Instagram, I believe I put her links down there for that too. So look her up there. Uh, but mainly, do it for me. Go and sub to her YouTube channel. Yep, YouTube channel's growing, but I'm I'm starting to starting to get the feel. So good things are coming. <laughs> good things are coming. All right, so you did Catfish League this weekend. That's yep. when I interrupted you. <laughs> it seems like a lot of fun. We had a I don't know if I should mention any here. We're not going to get into that. We had a a little online tournament here on the Fox this weekend too that okay. uh, I was asked to be in and I kind of turned down because I knew I wasn't going to win and I would have won if I if I'd have been in it. But that's usually the way it goes. So. There it is, how it goes. But yeah, we kind of do that from time to time, and it's it's all photo and they do length by girth and they do the the math that way. So yeah, yeah. So are you, are you are you a length by girth or are you an actual weight type of angler? Um, oh gee, you know, the tournaments that I'm in are all length and girth. Okay. Except, wait, wait, wait. Except for Catfish League, that one's poundage. Um, but like King, I'm in the King of the Cats tournament and that one's length and girth. Uh, what? Well, it just got switched to just length because, you know, things, things were happening, but, but usually length and girth. I, did you say King of the Cats? Is that the same one that Eric B. just took second place in? Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, when you said you went fishing with him, he just hauled in a big flathead. 60-pounder. Congratulations, Eric, if you're listening out there. He, he'll listen to it every now and then in the boat. So uh, oh, boy. Uh, mega kudos to you, my friend. Uh, good, good job, kid. Good job, kid. <laughs> good job, kid. You know, he calls me kid, too. It's ridiculous. People, <laughs> He's a funny dude. You know, Eric's a good dude. Well, he, he's he got a friend, Suburban Anglin, on YouTube that's a local kid out here. Um, Nicholas is his name, I believe. Forgive me if I got that wrong. And when they pull up next to each other in the boats, man, I don't have a, I don't have a clue what they're saying to each other. <laughs> Not a clue. Makes me feel so old. But Eric's a good kid. He's mm -hmm. a real nice guy. Uh, Great fisherman. Um, yeah, he's uh, in a league of his own. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, I know he'll be probably headed up there for Sturgeon this fall too so you'll probably be seeing them up that way if you don't yeah. get down here so yeah 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 for sure oh all right so here we're, we're gonna add, we got a question here in chat we'll take a little <laughs> we'll take a little take a break from your fishing so uh, oh gosh tara tell us about your harley fishing trip <laughs> that's right we got a question here evan wants to know uh all about your harley fishing trip all right let me tell you so i my truck Something went goofy with it. Was if power steering went out, it was a whole mess. And that was right that first week of pre-spawn where I was just really itching to fish. I had invitations to fish. I oh, it was stressful because I couldn't go get bait. I couldn't drive anywhere. But then I remembered I have my Harley in the garage. And so I decided I was gonna try to, to fish on my Harley. And so I strapped a, what was it, like a 20-gallon cooler to the back of my Harley, got the old Zebco two-piece, broke that down, shoved her in my backpack, and went and grabbed bait with it. 
and you know everything went swimmingly except for the the bait fishing part that was a little, <laughs> that was a did, little did you slow. catch some bait i don't even recall oh yeah i caught i caught plenty that night but yeah bullheads forever. right yeah yeah yep it took forever i swear i was out there for three oh. hours and i was like if i if i went through all this effort to make this video just to not catch bait i was so stressed but it ended up working out and i got home got him in the cooler it was it was a fun experience and you know i might i might play off that a little bit more on my YouTube and see what I can do with it. Like a little urban, urban fishing, something or another. I used, um, I used to, I used to take my Harley out fishing all the time. I had one of those uh, like five piece travel rods and stuff, but. Oh yeah. 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 I wouldn't have a bait tank on the back. So I'd be right. too late. I'd be scratching that paint job that I paid so much damn money to be done. But that's another story. I'm saying, I'm saying I was a little, I was a little stressed, but you know what HD stands for, or it used to stand for a hundred dollars. Every time you walk into the Harley dealer, <laughs> a little more money. Now it's, it's getting out of control. Yeah. So, yeah. I had a bunch of Harley. So there's, they got a soft spot in my heart most definitely. So yeah. I I'm like, Hey, look at her go. Hey. <laughs> You may yeah. want to you want to tell everybody in chat what kind of Harley you got. Brag yeah, a little bit. I have, oh, I'll brag a little bit. I have a 2019 um, Harley Fat Bob, 107. Oh. Nice. <laughs> I like Fat Bobs. Uh oh, who do I hear there in the background? Tell them to be quiet. That yep, they're there. It's not there. about him. I thought he was changing oil. <laughs> Your oil changed. It's done. It's done. He says. It's done. Okay. You got her done. All right, so before we get sidetracked on the uh, the Harley question, uh, so you did the the Catfish League this weekend. Yep. Anything else? Uh, no, just a bunch of trips out during the week. I thought I saw a PB picture. Was that last week? Well, the PB picture was with Luke and I's double. Which, like I told you before, this that video is coming oh, out. Are Wednesday. we not supposed? Are we not supposed to spill the beans on that one? No, let's spill the beans. That was it was a great fish and it was a double, which makes it even cooler. Um, and Luke put together a sweet video. Like I said, one of my favorite videos he's ever made. So Wednesday, keep your eye out. Every Wednesday, Luke's been putting out, or he's going to be. He he switched his day over to Wednesday, didn't he? Yep, he switched from Tuesday to, to Wednesday. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Cool. Yep. So make, you guys know where to find Luke over at Fish on Luke. So make yeah. sure you check that out. You get to see Tara in a video over there on, on Luke's channel. So yeah, that was super sweet. But yeah, yeah that was my PB. It was probably around 33 ish pounds. We didn't actually weigh it because it was just it was pandemonium in that boat with those two fish and trying to get them entered into our tournaments and get footage. And we just we were yeah, like, trying yeah, to get it. Trying to get that stuff on on film for YouTube, uh, for TikTok, pictures for Instagram and Facebook. It gets to be an awful lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. I think my next boat's gonna have a big old live well just for that. So I can I, I right now I hang them off my uh off the side of my boat in my whisker seeker net. Shout out to Whisker Seeker. Thanks for sending that to me, guys. Yeah, I saw um, your TikTok when uh you almost lost that thing. I just hit three hundred thousand views on that one today. Uh, I bet. <laughs> That's crazy. So I'm kind of happy that, that one did so well. It would have been worth probably losing that net, but I didn't. I had, I think I had an 18 pound channel cat in that net when it almost went over the side. Yeah, so. almost sent it right They into do the water. float. They definitely float. I've actually tested it. It floats no problem, but I don't know how well it would do if there was an 18 pound channel cat trying to swim away with it. So Right, or a big old flathead. Spongy. It could have gotten me a million views if it was floating and I'm just swimming around there. <laughs> hilarious Ooh, let's, see. let's see if we can make this head no oh gosh do it that was you. real that wasn't set up so I don't think <laughs> but i think funny. about it i kind of think how i can make things happen so yeah yeah so so how did you get let's go back to the very beginning you're a young lady how it, it like so what when you're a little girl maybe a year a couple years ago when you started mm -hmm. fishing how did you get involved you see i just feel old so yeah well you're, so you're, i I, 10 years is like a flash in a pan for me. <laughs> so I grew up camping with my dad and he would show me all his bullhead holes and stuff. And that's kind of how I got into fishing. And I don't really know what it was, but I just, I was kind of addicted to it. Like I, I just really, really, really liked to fish, even if we were just catching bullheads with bobbers. Um, and so as I grew older, I fished the lakes, um, you know, pike, bass, the, the huge, um, 
And then a couple of years ago, I was thrown in a group chat with Luke by one of my friends. So my friend got invited to go fish with Luke and he couldn't go. And he's like, well, Tara, maybe you should go. And I was like, I don't know who this guy is and who any of these people are in this group chat. Um, but threw me in it anyways and ended up meeting Luke um, at this this DNR parking lot in the middle of nowhere. We had like a two minute conversation before I hopped on the back of his snowmobile and we went ice fishing on the river and I caught my PB pike and whooped Luke's butt fishing. Riding, <laughs> riding Harleys and getting on of all strange men's sleds, Luke Henge's sled. You're, <laughs> you're a brave woman, let me tell you. You gotta that. do what you gotta do. And I don't know, I've ever since then, I, I've just fell in love with the river and I, I yeah i fish the river all the time now it's it's my thing well i can definitely tell you know by your presence in social media and your videos and stuff that you're, you're enjoying the ride definitely so that so that'll much. that'll take you everywhere in 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 fishing if if you're having a good time people are looking to uh forget their daily problems and the drama and the stress and all of that and yep. you make them forget about it for eight to 20 minutes you're doing a heck of a job and i think right good, so yeah i love it i love it so much so well, let's talk to this well i mean you know there's a lot of people out there in the chat that are on tiktok now so uh let's talk about tiktok a little bit so how'd you get started in tiktok oh man <laughs> Um, I just, I started on TikTok just like every other person, I guess I made an account just for the views and the funnies. And then I started seeing catfishing on it and just fishing in general. And I realized I would like search for people's live streams, loved watching lives on TikTok. Um, and then I've always, I've always liked making videos. Um, that's just, I've since forever, I've just enjoyed making videos. So I was like, you know what? I'm, a, I'm going to try my hand at being a cool TikTok fisherman. And so I did and people liked it. I hit a thousand followers. I started going live. Um, and then people started joining my live and it all just started blooming. And, um, yeah, so I'm, now I just, uh, I'm a big TikToker. I got I caught your live you. last, yeah, I caught. I no, stop. I caught. Yeah. I caught your live last week, and uh, I was trying to talk all those those, those 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 cheap TikTokers into giving you some gifts. So they wouldn't bite. I was like, "Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go." Usually, you can get you can get them worked up like that just by hollering at them, but for some reason, they didn't do that. Right. They must they must have been enamored by something else. So I don't know what. <laughs> Uh, yeah, know, you know, if, if you're not on TikTok, check it out. It's kind of fun. Just look at the tick. There's a lot of other garbage on there. Mm -hmm. If you're not interested, I can't understand that. But if you start do, doing searches on uh, hashtags or just on search terms in general, like fishing and stuff, there's there's a whole nother world out there. It's it's unbelievable. I remember when I got on there first, how surprised I was at the 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 size of the audience there. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's ridiculous, you know, and then you got, you know, it, it pretty much hurled Chunky into being the biggest live stream fisherman in the world. Luke had informed me of that. And I'm like, you know what? He's, he's absolutely right. And has is getting up there and you got Ernie, the hog, the er, Ernie, the hog, the hog snatcher, hog snatcher. That's it. <laughs> I'm, a hard time talking. I'm lucky I'm here. We had like tornado warnings and power just came on before you came on. Oh, uh, yeah, I was a little late tonight, but we got on here. Anyway, but they're all doing really good. I haven't had a chance to go on. I, I did go live on TikTok once, but it was from a tavern. And, and I remember not, that. Oh, you <laughs> saw that too? Yeah, didn't you win an award or something? You were out yeah. celebrating, and so you went live on TikTok. The award is nothing. Well, whatever. It was me, my wife, and uh, uh, some friends of ours. We were out there, and, and we were on there for a while. And there's still video. People screenshot that stuff, and they still send it to me whenever they try to blackmail me. You were something. having a great time. You were we were having fun. That was a good yep. time. I didn't do. I didn't do anything that I should be ashamed of, or I need to go to confession about. So I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I remember on my live, I had a a little pull on my rod. My clicker went. And I got real excited, and I was trying to get everybody else excited. And then you swooped in. You're like Tara. It's your bullhead. And I was like Mark. I, I gotta quit that. I gotta quit that. Look at this. We got Catfish and Pappy's been a member for 13 months. Thank you very much, Pappy. I appreciate you. Hello. I think he got here a little late, but I appreciate your support. Yeah, I you know, after you said that, I was like, oh, I'm such a 
I'm such a. <laughs> no, it's okay. It was funny. It I'm was trying funny. not to say bad words, Tara. So if I say something bad, yell at me. You were such a pooba. Yeah, pretty much. I was an ass. <laughs> I can say the word ass. I think that's acceptable. More like a jackass, but. <laughs> Um, cause I don't know. I, it's just, it's like, I'm talking to one of my friends when I'm on there, depending on who it is. And I like yeah. to give my friends a hard time. If I don't do that, then you're not my friends. It's all okay. I, I appreciate it. It was funny. We have another, uh, membership, uh, up for 13 months. Thank you very much, Chrissy Brown. I appreciate Ooh. you. I appreciate you very much. I got a lot of loyal members that watch. I need to do maybe some, uh, um, Members only live streams. I think we're going to try and do that. Maybe, oh, I should, maybe I should have, you know, I got an idea. We won't talk about ideas because people take them. I see Kenny Powell in there. What's up, Kenneth? How you doing? I said hello to Pappy. There's Miss Chrissy Brown. I did thank her. Buck Williams just showed up. What's up, Buck? LG Bass in the house. All these people are coming. Buck Williams, how you doing? Crazy Hillbilly. There's a good name. Uh, <laughs> Andy A in the house. Justin's fishing fetish crew member. What's up, Justin? How you doing? Brian B. Catfishing. Catfishing crappie crew member for 13 months as well. He says, Dummy. well, looky look. <laughs> We're part of what we call the big dummy club. So oh. <clears throat> at least that's what I'm calling it. So it's a long story. <laughs> You're too young for Sanford and Son, I guess so. Oh. So how are you dealing with the age gap between like the old school fishermen like myself and the, the new age ones like yourself and, and Eric B. And then you got people that fall somewhere in the middle is, is Luke because I ain't going to call him young because he calls me old all the time. <laughs> I ain't gonna yeah, give don't him give him that. Yeah. Um, I embrace it. I've got to say, you know, it's a wealth of knowledge. I mean, I mean, y'all are kind of goofy. Mm -hmm. Love goofy, but you know a lot. Cat fishermen are crazy. Crazy, yep. Yeah. I know a lot of pro bass fishermen, and they're not. Well, actually, a couple I do know that are kind of crazy. Like Mike Iconella, he's a nutball. Not Canelli, he's a nutball. <laughs> he's a good dude. I like I Mike. I, 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 met, I, I met him a couple of times. He's a good dude. We're not friends or anything, but he definitely was a good guy. And, and a little bit of time I got to spend with guys like. Babe Winkleman behind the scenes. He's not necessarily a bass fisherman, but he said he, he said some pretty pretty raunchy stuff. Well, not wrong. He said some pretty racy stuff behind the scenes, uh, directed at me, which was kind of funny. I wear it like he says, "Who's the guy with the Fu Manchu?" When I first came on, so <laughs> he said that to me. Oh man, <laughs> fame. So yeah, yeah, I met him at uh, I was volunteering for Min MN Dash Fish. It's like a uh, what is it they. They help push stuff through government in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was volunteering at their booth and I met him. He gave me his card and he was teaching me. I, I duck hunt too. And he was giving me all these tips and tricks and stuff. And it was sweet. He, he's he, he's a wealth of knowledge, man. The, the, the stories he was telling us both on and off the air, you know, it's um, I, I hope um, where when I'm at his place in life that that I have half as many stories that he had to tell. Yeah. So. That's pretty yeah. much why we all do it, I think. It's, it's You start building up this encyclopedia of PBs and stories and friends. And, yeah. and it, it, it to me, if it doesn't enrich your life, it's not worth doing. And fishing is definitely worth doing. I oh, I love that. If it, yeah, I totally agree. And I mean, when we were in Wisconsin and I met the whole crew and that was that was probably a, a big a big shift in my fishing career. You think so? So what do you think? What do you think of us when you met us up in Mendota? Oh gosh, y'all are so personable and funny. It was great. And then when we had that fish fry, that's when it just kind of locked in. I was like, wow, this is just a big family. Really. Now, let me ask you a question. Nobody, nobody will know. Just between you and I. Oh okay. What okay. did you think of those buffalo ribs? Did you try them? I did. And. Uh, Six out of ten. Six out of ten. Six out of ten. <laughs> I'd give it. A, I would have given it a five out of ten. I think you were being kind of nice. All right, five out of ten. Five I don't want to be mean. We're not being mean. It, it, uh, it was. It was prepared perfectly. They were. But they that were. texture is just like not some. Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> that texture is just something I'm not used to, and I was not expecting that because that was the first time I ever had it too. Yeah, me too. Me too. But that uh, what was it? The the channel cat. Oof. They okay. had. Uh, we were also comparing it to walleye and bluegill too. 
Oh, okay. okay. There isn't too much that can compare to that. There's a couple of ones, like obviously Yellow Perch and and, and, and Crappie. That's probably my number one favorite. So. Yeah, you don't say. <laughs> I don't mind catfish, but it's not by far. It's not my favorite. I had some pretty good catfish this weekend. Do you eat, do you eat a lot of fish or? Not really, to be no. honest. Um, but we, we do catch and cook sometimes. Um, but I never like go out with the goal of bringing fish home. Um, but you know, now that I more so know what I'm doing, I might, you know, I don't know. I like, I like how like Luke, he does, um, like eating weird fish. Like we ate a paddle fish. Um, I know that he wants to do an alligator or not an alligator, a gar video soon eating a gar. Um, I don't know. It, it might be another Avenue for me to take. I I'm just, I haven't gotten into it a whole lot yet. Yeah. You know, I'm, fish was an acquired taste for me um, growing up. I didn't really even like fish until maybe I was in my late 30s because mm. it was kind of forced upon me at Christmas Eve. Carp was forced upon me on Christmas Eve. Oh, boy. Being being Polish, Christmas Eve, you ate carp. And and uh, uh, a couple times that it was either you have to eat this carp or you get shrimp. Well, what are you going to pick? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me a while to get shrimp. I had a um a, a neighbor, or not shrimp, but, uh, to get a taste for fish. And I had a neighbor who 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 turned me on to to a lot of it. But I'm yeah. still learning, which is probably why that buffalo was a five out of ten for me, yeah. just because I'm I'm more a seafood than than freshwater fish eater. But I still mm -hmm. definitely enjoy good fillets every now and then. So yeah. um. Uh, you'd mentioned you're gonna see, you might do some catch and cooks. You got any plans in motion for your uh, YouTube channel or your TikTok shorts? Um, not really as far as catch and cooks yet, but um, like I said earlier with the motorcycle thing, I might try to try to do something a little bit with that, just because you know I kind of like being the the unexpected. I like doing the unexpected thing, and so I might play off that a little bit. Otherwise, lots of flathead fishing here soon. Yeah. Um, and once I get a boat, a, bit, a more reliable boat, I'm going to just send it. I'm going to make so oh, what many kind of videos. Boat? What are you running now? What kind of boat I have do you a, have? I have a 16 foot Alumacraft with a 40 horse that is a pain it's in the butt. It works. It, it works. works. It works, but it's not really, I don't, it's, it's one of those boats where you put it on the water and you don't know if, if you're going to get back. <laughs> oh, it's an older one. Yep. It's an older one. I mean, I, I replaced the motor on it last year and just the wiring's all goofy it was you could tell the guy before me was really trying to trying to cut some corners to get her to go but well the good thing about living where you're at you got you got a wealth of resources available to you so right. i'm sure you got friends up there that'll give you a hand or show you how to fix it yeah. so yeah that's you, what you, i mean with the catfish family there's just People are always willing to help. Isn't it the truth? We got, you know, I, I hang out with a bunch of guys here online and stuff, and we're always saying that we wish we lived closer to one another so we could mm -hmm. uh, um, definitely help each other out. Um, I know Chad had been wanting to do some stuff on his boat for a long time, and we're always telling him that we wish we were there to, to help him out and vice versa. So we Right, can. right. Well, even tonight, uh, 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 Luke's buddy Brandon, our buddy Brandon, came over to Luke's house off and changed his oil. It's like it's just sweet to have people you can call up and as long as you got as long as you got what they what they want, like you know, fridge. I got a cooler up in the garage, a free fridge full of beer that you <laughs> some calling. It got to the point it gets bad here to do it too sometimes. My my wife calls me the, the, the mayor of the neighborhood because as soon as that garage door opens, everybody shows up. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah. <laughs> it takes me like three hours to get my lawn cut and I only got a hundred and I got a hundred and what 30 by 60 foot lot so should be about 20 minutes that's it but anyway um all right so you got that old aluma craft when's the last time you had that out on a boat i haven't even had it out yet this year no no because i've been too dang lucky hopping on luke's boat so that I, thing I, is sweet i gotta it's admit so sweet. it's so sweet gosh and there's so much room in it you can get wherever you want to go um yeah, just a sweet boat. But I mean, this this upcoming weekend, I have a tournament, the Whisker Run tournament. Um, so by this weekend, that boat will be on the water. It's got you got a live you got a live well, or is it a picture tournament? Um, it's a uh, live weigh in, so got to haul the fish back to the launch. But I have a big old fifty gallon cooler that I'm gonna use. <laughs> 
takes up a lot of room in that little boat, but got to do what you got to do. Well, you know, 50 times nine, that's 400 pounds of weight. Can your boat handle that? To be determined. We'll find out. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hang close to the launch. That's all I got to say. There you go. <laughs> well, you probably can't get that far. So, uh, well, I mean, <sighs> what? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, with that kind of uh, bait tank, it's probably better that you do stay closer to the. Yeah, line. it is. Um, I was gonna say here, you can't really go that far because we got the uh, spillways and stuff. You know, every like. 15 20 miles or so so you can't really go all that far mm, i see i see so that, that would be good but there, there's all sorts of stuff going on with the tournaments here that still annoys like extra taxing them and causing them to get permits and do all sorts of stuff so pretty much yeah. every tournament that that i had ever considered being in has been canceled from my understanding so uh dang but you know, when you make everybody an outlaw, everybody's going to be an outlaw. So there's all sorts of stuff going on behind the scenes and that. So we'll see what happens this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And this tournament this weekend has almost 50 boats. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's a big tournament. So stay tuned to see how that goes. But you, you know, you're going to make some old fishermen sore when when some lady beats them, right? How are you going to deal with that? I sure hope so. I love girl power <laughs> vibes. You already know. <laughs> and this is this is why you're on my show because I kind of got that vibe from you. Oh, hang on. What? It's all pretty much the best catch anglers in Minnesota. Yeah, Luke says the whisker on is pretty much the best cat fisherman in Minnesota. So. Whoa. But you know what? I'm good at catfishing too. That's right. <laughs> so. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe At I'll, least I'll, one I'll of us on screen is out. here. I get lucky. That's what I tell everybody. <laughs> it's not all luck. I get lucky. Uh, so this is not your first podcast from my understanding. Nope. This, what honestly, else are you a part of or what else have you been on? Let's start there. So every Wednesday I'm on the Old Carver Fishing Podcast. I'm part of that crew um, out of the Old Carver Bait Shop. Um, and that's with me, Luke, Chewy, and a couple other guys. And every week we have a, a guest. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I don't know. Did you see the the uh, totally blacked out alligator gar that those guys caught? And where were I, they? Texas. I I didn't see that one. I was actually uh um I was somewhere. I I couldn't make that one. I I should probably go back and watch it again. I just haven't had a time, but I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, we had those guys on. It, we've had some really cool guests. Come on. I saw Chris Flores on there. I saw Spencer River Certified. And, of course, my favorite guest would be myself. Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> the best guest we've ever I was had. on there. I hope to get Chewy on my on my show pretty sometime soon. I know he says he's busy on Monday night. So yeah. if you look and put in a good word for me, maybe we'll get him on there. Oh, absolutely. We'll get him some more subscribers. On, on that note, let's take a break here to remind everybody that Tara's links are in the per, in the description. Go in there, give her channel, a, a, make sure you watch some of her video. And if, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to like what you see. If you like that bullhead on a, bice, on a, on a Harley video, Watch that one. That's one of my favorites so far. Oh, thanks. Subscribe, subscribe to her channel. Make sure it sticks, and uh, she'll appreciate she'll appreciate it, and it'll uh, uh, get her to uh, keep pushing out that content because it can yeah, be a yeah. grind sometimes. Yep, I just had a hundred a hundred subscribers on Saturday. I think it was. Yeah, you and see that, folks? You're gonna be you're gonna say, "Hey, I was one of her first thousand subscriber when she's famous <laughs> out there." <laughs> To claim to fame. Why Maybe. wouldn't you want to get in on this early? This is like getting in on cryptocurrency back in 2010. Oh I'm an investment. <laughs> right. Bragging rights. There's SK's <laughs> crappy catch adventure. What's going on, SK? How you doing? SK is another one of my friends here online that I've been watching forever. And, and uh, do you like crappie fishing? We talked a little bit about ice fishing for him. Um, I, I don't, do I don't you think have redhead a... fever too bad. I got flathead fever, man. Yeah. I do. I do. Um, I'm a big fish girl. I like chasing the big fish, but I have been 120. 120. I told you we'd take good care of you. Thank you guys for checking out her channel. Make sure you go back and you watch at least one of her videos. Make it stick. Go back and watch them all. Give her some watch time because she does need that 4,000 hours as well. So we like to take care of everybody. What's 4,000 hours? What does that do? You got to have 4,000 hours in a year to get monetized at 1,000. Right, so. Oh, 
Oh, Luke just hit that yesterday. All right, congratulations, Luke. I know yeah, the big guy. He's chirping back here. What can I say? That's, <laughs> I don't hear him. His that mic works pretty good, so we're not hearing too much. <laughs> I hear mumbling every now and then, but I'm used to that. Yeah, he's mumbling back there. <laughs> well, see, we got we got mixed ones. We got Tanya Hollis says she hooks it at you. That's kind of code for us to subscribe to you. Ooh, we got one, that. 121 here. There we go. We got people. Thanks, guys. Different stuff. Look at that crappie day. I told you they take good care. We got some good people. There's my oh. buddy Jesse over at Outdoor Addiction. He's a local guy here that I still need to get out and fish with. So, oh, well, I appreciate that, everybody. Thanks. So, uh, when you're making your videos, do you go out and you, you plan it all out or are you just kind of on a wing and a prayer like I do? Okay. Well, oh, I got to say, my, my videos, my first two videos were winging it or my first three i have four videos now <laughs> my first three were winging it i usually just strap on a gopro and go and you know if good things happen i mush it all together later um but this last bullhead bait fishing on my harley video that one was a little bit more planned out still pretty goofy and slightly not as professional as i wanted it to be especially because it got dark and i went live on tiktok so i just used the footage from that mm -hmm. um and yeah, the darkness really, really, really screwed me over there. But I had to get a couple fish in the tank to make it a video. But that was the first one I planned out. Uh, but like I said, once I get my boat on the water, um, get a better feel for, you know, setups and all that, I'll start planning out some more. And I've learned a lot from, from Luke. <laughs> so, so there'll be a lot more planned out from here on out. And yeah, hopefully some good stuff comes. I'm excited. I, I have no doubt that it will. So, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> it's not like a your Chadwick Fields or anything. The only reason why I said that is because he just went in. So, <laughs> <laughs> gotta roast him when you can. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, cool. What about your TikTok videos? Because I'm uh, trying to do a little more planning with mine. I don't know if that's going to happen or if it's going to come, but pretty much what I've been doing is using it as a kind of a. a place to reuse stuff that hit the cutting room floor and it's kind of been working i should have included a lot of that stuff in my videos i'm starting to learn yeah yep people i don't know i tiktoks are every time i go out i always just take like little mini clips of stuff um or if i take a long video where i'm like this isn't gonna work for a youtube but i might be able to take this five second snippet and make it something cool mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where my tiktoks come from and then um, just scrolling and finding trendy things with fishing. Um, that helps a lot too. I, I wouldn't say I plan them out. I always plan on making one, a TikTok every time I go out, but that's about it. And you never know what's going to happen. So it doesn't work out that way, does it? <laughs> Not really. Trendy. What's that? I was going to say when you mentioned that. Trendy, like sounds and stuff like that. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's hard. There's not many fishing trends, I'd say, but. Speak hey, of the there, devil. There, What's up, Eric? Congratulations on that monster 60 pounder. I'm coming for you, kid. <laughs> Same. I'm, gonna, I'm coming up there and I'm going to get me a 61 pounder. He's the king of the spillway. <laughs> 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 Eric's a good guy. Make sure you guys somebody post Eric Slink on there too. He was on a show. He's a great guest. So I always love him. <laughs> Eric, I always love talking to him too. Social media. I only under we only understand like a third of what we say to one another, but we kind of understand each other like on a weird <laughs> wavelength. So, so. <laughs> on a telepathic level. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much it. Dangerous spillway uh -huh. fish, Eric. <laughs> yeah, you saw that too. I was gonna highlight that. And now <laughs> he's in chat funny. causing trouble. Yep. So back to back so back to Mendota. We don't we do not need to everyone's coming here, don't worry. Oh, I guess he invited some more people. Cool. So uh tell us a little bit about your fishing while you were in Mendota. Holy smokes. Because I'm still a little uh Wait a butthurt about that too. Why? <sighs> Why? Because I had a 23 and a half pounder, it was enough to beat Chad. And then you got to turn on and what did you catch while you were there? Your PV? Um, 25 point. How big was that fish? I'm blanking. Which one? Channel. 2528. 2528. 2528. Congratulations. 25. That's a beast. I tell you what, that was incredible. A fish I never thought I would ever catch. 
And I knew immediately, right when I reeled down on it, it was just a log. Like it felt like a snag and that's how, that's how you know. Really? Yeah, I it was it was incredible. And it was so weird that we were sitting in that spot for oh gee, probably 45 minutes an hour before anything happened and then when things did start happening, it was like eight fish, just fish after fish after fish and I don't know if anyone's watched the video on Luke's channel, but we we had just put a fish back and I was just walking back, you know, like de debriefing after all the fish we just caught and then smack there was the big one and got that in and i was quiet for a while after but holy that's a, that's, you know i gotta get in the habit of not saying the name of that place but that's a pretty magical place ain't it oh holy I, wow yeah that's such a cool place to go i i look forward to going over there i have the last two years i'll definitely keep going back yeah there. me too me too and i mean i i've heard things i heard how great it was and and you know, but you always go in kind of like, well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do this. Hold on a second. Wayne Hoska, thank you very much for the $5 super chat. I appreciate it. Ooh. And here comes Eric B. He says, nope, no fish there. Nothing to see. Nothing worst, to see. Worst lake. What of lake? Course. No fish there. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there's, there may be a fish or two there. Mm. But yeah, I, I'm just not going to tell them about Eric Eric B's River that I plan on getting up there sometime this year. So, oh, don't do that. <laughs> they probably post spawn. We'll go up there, Eric. I'll give you a holler. Uh, maybe we can hang out together. Actually, I just watched, uh, uh, and I think I, I'm pretty sure Spencer was just up there in his a video that was out here a couple of weeks ago. But I don't know when he filmed that. They were still wearing jackets and stuff. Oh, so. River started. River started. Yeah, he, yeah, he's usually a couple of weeks off to try and conceal his spaces. But that was like the first one that he posted that I actually knew where he was fishing. So I was kind of proud of myself like some kid. So that <laughs> <was good. laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that place is great. Uh, Chad's telling fibs again. He says, Mark and Tara, Tara caught their fish in my spots. Those were technically my fish. <laughs> but we saw them flow by. Right after that, or before that. Yeah, actually, I noticed Chad and Dee in the background. You guys were talking to him during that video. That was kind of cool to see. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. All the people from the shore were hooting and hollering, and there was boats around. They were all jacked up about that fish, and boy. Maybe one of these cool. days I'll be big and famous enough for Luke to put me in the background in some of his B-roll or something. <laughs> that would be so cool if he could do that for me. Oh. I'll let him know that you want to be in the B-roll. He heard me. I know he heard it, me. He probably did. He did. <laughs> that's hilarious. So 20, 20, just over 25 pounds, that, that's a slop. You know, I, I always say I want to get my 30-pounder someday, and that's probably one of the play, one of the few places that that can happen. Yeah. I'll say Dusky, I think, might be another one. And then um, I, I talked to Luke a couple of times, but he's up there. What is it, the Red River up north of you guys? Oh, yeah. But he was saying that's a lot of numbers rather than size, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. Yeah, I haven't been there. I wouldn't know yet. But Yeah, so definitely go up there. If he'll take you to his spot up there, go up there and, and, and go get yourself 400 pounds of channel cats, 20 Oof. pounds at a time. That would be a great day. That would be a great day. I don't want to ask for too much because that fish is pretty hard to top, but... I'll try. <laughs> I always top them. I'm always looking to top mine. Yeah. You got what? What kind of goals you got this year, fish wise? Um, I want to get on a white sturgeon. So hopefully Luke and I will head out to Idaho and do that. Um, blue cat. I still have never caught one. You want to know what my PB blue cat is? And every chance us. I get to brag about it, I have to tell us. Eight pounds. Woo! <laughs> Eight pounds is my PB blue cat. Hey, it's better than my PB blue cat. I, I am not. I am not. I'm not ashamed. I'll take it. <laughs> well, we'll see know. if we can get on. I'm going down to. Uh, um, I'm going down to Wheeler this fall, uh, with some people. Um, on the down low, we're going to sneak down there, and, and uh, uh, hopefully we can do a little better than that. I think we can. I'm not promising. I'm going to get that. You know, 82 pounder. Somebody who's listening will know what I'm talking about, but we're going to try for a hundred pounder. We'll see. Talk to a couple of my buds and that, and they say that's the time of the year to go down there. So, all right. All right. I mean, before, before Wisconsin, my PB Chan was 11 pounds. So, 
both my PBs came out of that that very special place. For I had a, I had an eleven pound channel yeah. cat PB for literally for like ten years down here, yeah. and then I got a fourteen pounder, uh, which is kind of funny because I got a fourteen pounder on the river, um, and like five literally like four or five minutes later, I get a twenty six pound flathead. So kind of like wiped the. The, the memory of that channel kid on my head like, <laughs> right away. Sorry, channel cat lovers. I love them too, but, but the are different, yeah, man. I'll get it. They're great. But, and, and then I went up there and I got what I think it was a 19 pounder last year or 17 pounds, something like that. And this year I got that, that 22. So, uh, that, that I think I'll be definitely going up there. I did get the uh, season pass for the boat ramp up there. Um, so, oh, there uh, maybe, you go. Yeah, so we'll probably go back. I'm only two hours away. It's not too bad. Yeah, but if I'm know. heading that way, what's to stop me from going another another half hour to this other fishery and chase flatheads while I'm up there? So maybe we'll see what happens in the in the fall once they go to sleep. But anyways, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so tell us a little bit about where you fish. Um, so I'm in uh, what is it, East Central Minnesota. Um, I'm mostly on the Minnesota River. Um, that's kind of a numbers place too. Lots of fish. Um, but finding one that's of mega size is where you want to go to the, the St. Croix for, mm -hmm. they have some real quality fish out of there. Um, but, and you know, I haven't flathead fished that river yet, but I will say, I feel like they're few and far between, but when you do hook into one, it's a chongus. Well, are you guys, fish, you guys are fishing. No, I could be mistaken here. Are you guys fishing the Mississippi for flatheads? Isn't that where Luke fishes? Um, sometimes last year I put in a lot of work on Mississippi too, on the yeah. um, pool too. That's actually where the tournament is this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and I gotta say it kicked my butt, but I, I'm gonna say it's because of the low water. <laughs> Nobody really did well on pool two last year. It, um, it makes you, it makes you a better angler. Most definitely the harder the fishing is. Right. I learned a yeah. lot. I was forced to learn a lot last year, <laughs> um, but, and I haven't been out on the Mississippi yet this year, but um, I might do some pre-fishing before the weekend. So we'll see. We'll see. Carolina Bass Hunter says, I caught a giant flathead not too long ago while bass fishing. Sheesh. How'd I that go? <laughs> I, I got I got a, an acquaintance here that just caught just caught a twenty six pound flathead on a crappie jig. That took him like forty nine minutes. He says because he timed it on his GoPro to get that sucker in. Oh my gosh! He got he got lucky. His battery was almost dead too because you get what an hour out of a GoPro something like that. See, so that kind of cool. now that's a TikTok. Yeah, pretty much for, well. You put in yeah. that last snippet. It's a TikTok. Yeah, he's not a TikToker. He just. He go pros it so he, he can prove to me he's not lying because I think he lies a lot, but that's another <laughs> oh, <story. man. laughs> video documentation. Pretty much. We do that all the time. <laughs> that's how I got started in YouTube is to prove what I'm catching. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. People aren't very trusting at anglers. Do you ever see those arguments people get into on social media about what a fish weighs? Oh, gosh, yeah. I don't oh even po I don't even post weights anymore. I just put this whether it's a good fish or number of fish other than that. So Yeah, yeah. I feel that for sure. I mean that would be a good reason to go to length as well, but again, I'm old and set in my ways. <laughs> you can always take you can always take a picture with that. Do you ever think about doing any of those online tournaments like through oh. chaos, fish chaos and stuff like that? Um, I do online tournaments through like Fish Donkey. Especially for right. yep, uh, women anglers of Minnesota, they have a summer long tournament. It's called the Wham Slam. Uh -huh. um, and it's multi species and it's a point system. Like the biggest fish slot is three points, and then you cap out that category. Okay. Um, so I'm in that. And I so you can, you can go after a different species. Like if you if you can't beat like the biggest flathead, you can go after like the biggest walleye, right? And get the same kind of mm -hmm. points. Is right. that how it works? Okay. Yep. So I've already capped out my catfish. I've already got my three point catfish. Uh -huh. Um, and I think I have a three pointer somewhere else too. I think Sauger. I don't know. So I have a three point somewhere else too, but now there's like bass, pike, just so all almost, the fish, really. It's almost like a poker run type deal. You gotta get all your cards in order and the one who yeah. has the most wins. Okay, gotcha. Yep, yep, pretty much. Well, that pretty seems much. like a lot of fun. So it is really cool. fun and it gets women out fishing and it gosh, it's real cool seeing. I mean, besides the point, but seeing the community of women who are out there fishing for that tournament is great. It's Again, great. It, it no one's listening here. No one's listening. <laughs> do you have Do you have like a rival, lady or lady angler that you 
<laughs> okay, we're not. I don't have a rival. I don't have a rival, but okay. I will say it's a nice, it's a subtle, subtle competition because ultimately we're always cheering each other on, especially in women anglers in Minnesota. We all want each other to do well, but I will say when someone catches a bigger catfish or sturgeon than me, I get a little bit like, all right. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Men get that way too. <laughs> oh, I know that for sure. <laughs> right, Chad? Oh, did I say that out loud? I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> but I got to say, I love beating the dudes too. I'd rather beat a dude than a girl. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a, I'm a dude that's been bitten, beaten a couple of times by lady anglers and it doesn't make you feel too good. Heck yeah, I love it. <laughs> Let it sting. Talk about <laughs> destroying your masculinity. Holy smokes. Gonna... That's my favorite. <laughs> That's all right. You keep doing what you got to do. It keeps life interesting. Right. <laughs> I've been kind of keeping an eye. If you guys got any questions in chat, make sure you ask them now. Because I'm telling you, this young lady is going to take off. And you're not even going to be able to get in touch with her oh. until you go through her her <laughs> through her agent my agent agent <laughs> oh man is mark talking who is that oh man yeah that's chad the field <laughs> swatter chad did you hear something <laughs> boom roasted you just mad cuz i was late earlier <laughs> and i talk, I talk of, about him all the time that's right we go after each other once in a while uh let's see chat bluegill oh do you like bluegill well you can't use bluegill up there mm -mm, but in wisconsin we use bluegill and we caught bullhead giant i've never seen bullhead that big before and they were biting on our bluegill so i didn't i didn't really get anything super productive off bluegill out there but one day in minnesota i'd love to use a bluegill <laughs> You know, I like bullheads better than bluegill. Bluegill do work pretty good down here. Um, and I think you guys, uh, I know you guys are working on, and I know I talked to Luke a little bit about the the two lines or two pole limit, mm -hmm. increase to two poles, which will definitely help. But blue, definitely bullheads are not are not a bad bait. No, they're not. Yeah. I mean, when you if you can change it up a little bit, I think that'll definitely help. You, you'll end up having one bullhead on one and, and one bluegill on the other and be able to find out what they prefer that way. I kind of, yeah. I'm a firm believer that they do have a preference any one day over the other. So. Yeah, that's true. And it, uh, last Saturday at my tournament, we were getting our, our fish on cut bait, cut sucker, which was so weird because, you know, we had our bullhead out. That's what I've been catching fish on all week. And then mm -hmm. one day they decide they want cut soccer. Has Tara been fish slapped yet? <laughs> I have not. Jody got whacked in the head with a fish. A yeah. Flat I, I think a blue cat, yeah. She Where did I see that? Was that on YouTube? Or where was that? I saw I, that. I heard about it. I think she did post it on uh, no, on Facebook, I, I believe. Must have been there. I'm sure she'll, she'll be more than happy to send that to you. She's pretty proud of that. She's proud of that and her twins. She doubled up on some flatheads, so she did a good job on that one. Very solo, doubled up? I don't remember if she was. No, I think she had someone else in the boat. I could be wrong. Oh, I see. I see. So I don't know. I okay. saw, when I doubled up this weekend, even though that second one was small, I still had the big one in the net. I'm like, how do I get the, the one out of the net and then the other one in, which is how I got all scraped up real bad. Yeah. But yeah. hey price of admission so right i'll take it let it burn <laughs> well, you, got, you got anything else you want to share with everybody any uh any 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 sponsorships you might want to tell people about let me tell you this week i got sponsored by catch the fever congratulations thank you um yep those hellcat rods that i've been using introduced to them by luke obviously um but yeah they caught wind of me got added onto the team my discount code came became active today tara 10 on the website 10 percent off um so i'm just super jazzed about that it's i think i kind of told you earlier it feels good to be believed in like that and so that's good congratulations yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens i'm also sponsored by nocturnal nation catfish hooks nice um, yep yep so i'll be yeah, showing showing what those can do here soon. Good for you. It's always good to have people that believe in you. Yeah, that that's the biggest thing. I mean, people like sponsors for different reasons, but for me, it's just people seeing me and recognizing my potential. 
Um, and the, the time that I put in, I put in so much time. Um, so big things coming. This is just the, the infancy. There you of go. My, of my catfishing career. That being <laughs> said, you guys want to get in on this early. We're talking crypto here. <laughs> Come over to Sarah's YouTube channel <laughs> and give her a subscription. She watched some of her video. Up the mountain, but you only halfway up. What? <laughs> Luke's <laughs> chirping back there. I don't even know what he's saying. It's hard to hear him with those headphones on. I'm sure he'll tell us when it's done. So I'm sure. <laughs> Ed says, I believe in Tara. Mark. But so much, but Tara. Okay. Mark, not so much, probably. Yeah, okay, <laughs> oh, and man. Eric is saying his hands are messed up, too. Yeah, I believe yeah, it. Yeah, we all got a little rash cooking, I bet. Mm -hmm. I yeah. got to start, start wearing gloves. Dude, yours call. is pretty rough. Yeah, we're not going to show it. It is pretty, pretty rough. And gnarly. <laughs> telling you, I've had them rip the skin all the way down to the bone on me before. So, yeah. Yeah, I could show you pictures, but I'm not going to, so worth it though so uh, tara thank you very much for being on the show i appreciate you don't go anywhere yet we'll talk a little bit after the show okay. uh, i want to thank everybody for watching i want to give another shout out to my sponsor port barrington marina you guys are awesome they're saving me uh, they're taking good care of me trust me i'm pretty happy <laughs> I'm very happy with that one. So uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. If you're listening to this on a podcast, on the audio, make sure you check out the description. Go check out uh, Tara Lindsay, L-I-N-S-A-Y, on all the social media. Check her out on YouTube, obviously, and uh, um, give her a follow. I'm telling you, crypto. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> have a wonderful night. Thank you, Tara. Uh, have a great one. And hold on. Have a good night. Get out Thanks and fish. for having me. You got it. <laughs>